Hey everyone, uh, my name is Kelvin and welcome to my video tutorial for Mandala Creator Pro. Uh, this is the tutorial for the latest version, this is the 2018 update. And uh, I've changed a lot of things uh, when compared to the other edition, the first edition of it. Um, so even if you've already used this add-on, I really recommend you watch the tutorial again. Uh, there's a couple new features that I really want to show you. But the beginning of the tutorial is going to be pretty familiar. If you're already super familiar with this add-on, maybe skip to the middle and watch it from there. Uh, I've updated some stuff with how this add-on lets you uh, handle the mandalas, color the mandalas, sort of prepare them in the end. But if you're new here, if you're new to Mandala Creator, welcome. And uh, we'll get started right away. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to make a mandala just like this one. And the first thing you'll do is download the product folder and then go ahead and unzip it. Inside you'll find these two folders. Uh, folder number two here will have extras and other resources. Uh, these are some tools that are totally optional. They might help you uh, with some of your projects involving mandalas. Um, each of them has its own folder in there uh, with a readme and inside the readme there'll be instructions or a link to a YouTube video. Um, but the product itself is inside folder number one here so I'll double click that. And uh, there's three files here. Uh, this is the actual Mandala Creator. It's an AI document. And then these are the action scripts. And you'll load the action scripts along with this Mandala Creator uh, template here. Uh, and this will give you all the tools you need to make mandalas. So the first thing you'll do is open up the template here. So I'll double click that to open it in Adobe Illustrator. And uh, this is what the template looks like. Uh, the brushes are already opened up here, but I'll minimize that and show you how to uh, find those yourself. Um, once you get the template loaded, you need to open up the uh, brush panel. And you can click the little uh, brush icon over here, or you can al uh, also find it by going to Window and then Brushes. And uh, it'll look just like that. And these are all the different mandala patterns. And they're uh, stored as brushes, but when they work with the scripts, uh, they create mandala rings. So I'll show you how to load the action scripts. And to do that, you need to do that from within the Actions panel. That's this over here. And you can find the Actions panel by going to Window and then Actions. And uh, it should look just like this with a bunch of default actions. I recommend that you clear those actions first. And you can do that by going to the little menu here. And then click uh, Clear Actions. And we'll do Yes. And then you can load new actions by clicking the menu again. Load Actions. And then navigate back to that folder you downloaded. It's in the uh, folder number one and then these are the scripts and you only need to load one of them so if you want to make a six-pointed mandala load this one and if you wanted to make an eight-pointed mandala you'll load this one but for this tutorial I'm gonna use the six-pointed scripts so I'll click on that one and then click open and uh, I'm doing this tutorial in uh, Adobe Illustrator Creative Cloud but this add-on works fine in CS5 and CS6 so the action scripts they should look like this like little buttons if they don't uh, button mode probably isn't enabled so make sure that this little uh, button mode option here is checked and then all the uh, scripts can be run just by clicking on them so to start a mandala just run this first script and that'll create a mandala ring in the center and automatically select a default pattern from here and if you want to change that pattern you can click any one of these uh, there's about hundred and seventy brushes here and they've all been organized uh, in terms of their complexity so these C ones uh, these are designed for use in the very beginning, but you can use any of these patterns at any stage. I just made these ones with the center of the mandala in mind, so I marked them all as C. And as you can see, if you click a different one, it'll apply a different pattern to this ring. And uh, you can also use any of these down here. Uh, but you can see, the further down you go in the list, the, the more there's likely to be like an empty set, uh, center here. So that's why I created brushes specially designed for uh, the very center of the mandala. So. I'll choose a brush like uh, this one. I think that's pretty good. And the basic process for building a mandala is from the inside out. And as long as this ring is still selected here, you can just click Duplicate Ring. It'll make a copy of that and put it behind. And uh, you can use this Grow uh, Ring script or the Shrink Ring script to change its size. So I'll grow it so you can see it here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And uh, while that one is selected, uh, you can select a different pattern. If you want to go back and change the uh, the inside here, you can just select that ring and choose a different pattern like that. It's up to you. Uh, the mandalas stay live and editable throughout the whole process. Uh, at the very end, I'll show you how to clean it up, but we'll keep going here. So I'll select the outermost ring, and I'll duplicate ring again to choose a different pattern. 
and I'll rotate it. Here I got a script here that will rotate it 45 degrees. And that'll kind of give it this interlocking look. Whereas if it's just like that, everything's in line. So all the patterns can be staggered. So let's choose a different uh, pattern here. These, I'm still using the center ones here, but I think I'll move uh, further out here. These S patterns, uh, that stands for simple. These are the simplest patterns. And those look a little bit too simple. I'll go to the uh, medium, medium patterns here. Let's choose that one. That's nice. So it's a little bit staggered here, so I'll rotate it again so it lines up. Maybe shrink it a little bit. And uh, add a new ring here, duplicate ring. And as you can see, it's copied it and put it behind it. If you don't see anything when you use that script, it's because the pattern is too small. Like, it's being covered up like that. So if you don't see it, but you're sure you pressed the right script here, just try growing it a little bit until you can see the pattern kind of pop out from behind there. So let's select different pattern here, maybe that one. We'll stagger it a little bit and shrink it. And this is looking pretty good. I think I'll, I'll almost, maybe just a couple more patterns here and then I'll be done. So let's add another one here, duplicate ring. Let's grab a little bit more complicated one. These B ones, this stands for border. Uh, this stands for arches. And the X stands for uh, maximum complexity. These are the most complicated patterns. So maybe that one is nice. I think I'll rotate it to line it up with the uh, vertical one there. OK. And then just one more pattern. I think I'll do a border this time. So I'll duplicate ring. And uh, you can see it's just made a copy and put it behind it. So let's select a border. And this will be a good example of when you probably won't see a pattern. Borders are quite small. So I think I'll select that one. So it's pretty much being occluded. You can barely see it on the edge there. So I'll grow it. And you'll notice this pattern is a little bit, little bit big. I'd like the pattern to be smaller. So here you can grow the ring or shrink the ring. And down here you can affect the pattern by rotating the pattern. But you can also shrink the pattern. So right now, this is actually six instances of the pattern. If I click this shrink pattern, it'll shrink everything down, and now it'll give us 12 instances. So that's how you can uh, increase the density of a simple pattern. And this works great for borders uh, and great for some of the simple and medium complexity patterns. If you do this to the most complex patterns, sometimes they will be too dense or too complicated. But this looks pretty good. Maybe I'll shrink it a little bit. Okay, I'm happy with this mandala. It's done. And uh, you'll notice it has all different thicknesses of lines here. So I've got this cleanup script here, and this will make all the lines the same thickness. Uh, so as long as you're totally done, uh, you can run this script. Uh, it's undoable, but once you run the script, you won't be able to change the patterns anymore. So as long as you're happy with the way it looks, just run this script number one down here. And uh, it'll take a second. Make sure it finishes. If you click on anything while the script is running, it'll interrupt the script, and uh, it'll cause some errors whenever you run that script again. So if you do accidentally interrupt any of these scripts and it gets highlighted red, uh, you can just uh, go up here, clear the actions, and then load them again. So here we go. The cleanup script is all done. And you can see it's made all the lines uh, the same thickness. Now, if you're using this for a coloring book, you don't have to go any further. Like, you can just be done. Uh, save this in a new document, like you would go ahead and you'd copy this mandala file or edit and then copy. Uh, make a totally new document because this mandala creator template has this uh, watermark and stuff. So make a new document, probably a square one is, is good. And then I'll do paste, paste the mandala in the middle there. Then I can scale it up. And uh, while the mandala is at this stage, you can still change the stroke thickness. And the best way to do that is to enter it directly. Like if you wanted a four-point stroke, just type in four and then enter. And it'll give it a four-point stroke. I don't recommend um, scrolling through because uh, it can cause a little bit of a confusion with Illustrator. If you accidentally give this mandala a zero-point stroke, it will lose the style. And uh, it'll, you'll see some strange uh, glitches in the pattern. So make sure you don't accidentally give it a, a zero-point stroke. But any stroke, one, two, three, all the way up to whatever, uh, it's totally fine. So you can see it has all this hidden detail. And uh, if you just want the graphic of this mandala, like you just want to export it as a JPEG or a PNG, uh, this is fine. You can just save it using the Save for Web dialog. For example, you could go to Export, Save for Web. 
and uh, save it as a uh, JPEG or even a PNG. PNG 24 is probably best. And uh, this is where you can change the size. Uh, make sure it's high enough uh, resolution for your project. If you're using it in a coloring book, you probably want it to be like a minimum of 3,000 or even 4,000 pixels uh, square like this. There we go. And it'll take a second to load. And uh, there we go. It, since it's a vector originally, it won't ever get pixelated, uh, no matter how big you scale it here. But once you save this PNG to your desktop and you scale it up bigger than this, maybe you scale it up to 4,000 pixels, you'll see pixelation in the design. So make sure when you save it from Illustrator, you save it as big as you'll need it to be. Because once it's saved as a PNG, it has pixels at that point. So I'm not going to save this one. I'm going to cancel it. So if I select this mandala, you'll see it has all kinds of uh, hidden detail. Most of the time this won't be a problem, but if you want to use this mandala as a cut file or maybe a file for uh, use with a laser cutter, all this extra detail, it will just uh, confuse your project. So I made this other script called flatten mandala, and that flattens everything uh, down to just one layer of shapes and gets rid of all this unnecessary detail. The downside with this flatten mandala script is that it takes a little while to run, maybe one minute or one and a half minutes, something like that. So if you do want to flatten your mandala uh, and just turn it into shapes and get rid of all this extra detail, just go back to the uh, mandala creator template. And uh, this script will only work inside here. It will only work inside this template. And uh, it has some risks associated uh, with this script. Uh, if you use it the wrong way, it could freeze Illustrator for 10 minutes or more, and uh, you might uh, force quit Illustrator and lose some of your work. So before you use this script, double check that there's nothing else uh, outside here, outside the artboard. So if you're making mandalas uh, and storing them off on the edges here, uh, and then making a new mandala, copying it, putting it over there, uh, and you run this script, it will sort of suck everything in, and uh, it will take so long to run because the, long, uh, the more complicated the mandala, the longer uh, this script will take to finish. So if you run this uh, script on 10 mandalas, it, it could take a half an hour. Uh, and you might have to close Illustrator and lose your work. So make sure all of your mandalas that you want to keep are put in another document, a blank document, and uh, only have one mandala on the template at a time if you're planning to use this script. So you don't have to select anything. If you're sure you want to use this script, uh, make sure the stroke thickness is set because you won't be able to change that. So let's set it to 3 pixels. Okay, that looks good. And uh, I'll just run this script and uh, I'll, show you, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like in the end here. So the script is done, and you know it's done because it puts this little uh, green box in the middle here that says completed. Make sure you don't click on anything while the script is running, and don't do anything with Illustrator until you're absolutely sure it's finished and you see this uh, green box here. And I'll delete that. I'll click it and delete it. And uh, that script took a little while to run. And uh, in this video, I fast forward it for you to save time, but in real time, it took about a minute and a half to run. And uh, the reason it takes so long is because it's a pretty uh, intensive script. It forces Illustrator to consider every point and intersection of points in your mandala. So that's why if your mandala is huge and complicated, the script will take longer to run. And uh, the way it works is it doesn't let Illustrator use parallel processing. So it does take a long time, and it's not because your computer is slow. Even if you have a top-of-the-line uh, MacBook Pro, it will still take a minute, minute and a half, maybe even two minutes for a big design. It's just because of the way Illustrator has to handle one point and one intersection at a time. So it looks the same as the uh, mandala we had before, but it's quite a bit different. And uh, you can see that when I select the mandala, all this random points and lines that you saw before is gone. So I'm going to copy it, and uh, I'll paste it into our uh, other document here, and I'll compare it side by side uh, with the uh, one we made originally. So I'll paste it there and scale it up. So running that script got rid of all this hidden detail. So here's the original one and when I select that you see all these circles and lines and stuff 
And it's because these patterns are stacked and they have uh, parts of their design uh, being hidden by the designs on top of them. So this flattened mandala script gets rid of all that extra detail. The main downside is that it takes a, a little while to run. But um, some, for certain uses of your mandala, you absolutely need that. For example, if you want to color your mandala in Illustrator or turn your mandala into like a cut file or something like that. You can't send a mandala with all this extra detail uh, to a laser cutter machine or a cry cut machine. Uh, it'll just confuse the thing. So let's hide this one over here, put it off the artboard. And uh, I'll show you how to color. So this mandala, it's been uh, cleaned up and it's been flattened. So make sure when you build your mandala, um, do the scripts like normally. Always run the cleanup line script at the end. Sometimes run the flattened mandala. It just depends. So here's our flattened mandala. Let's move it to the center of the artboard here. And uh, it's made entirely of black and white shapes now. There's no strokes. So what I can do is actually select individual cells in this mandala using shift, for example, to select more than one. And then I can change the color. And this is how you can color a mandala um, in Illustrator. Now, you can't do that using uh, the mandala that's only been cleaned up because it has all these layers of detail. It's super confusing. So if you need to color an Illustrator, you will need to run that flattened mandala script. So you can go through and select each and every cell uh, manually, but if you want to select, uh, for example, all the white parts or all the black parts, uh, you can do that with these select all black or select all white. Just make sure you only uh, run them uh, in the Mandala Creator Pro template. They won't work outside of that. So if you want to select all the white pieces and change them to another color, for example, just click this Select All White. It'll automatically look for the white and uh, select it. And then I can change the uh, swatch over here. Let's change it to red, for example. And I can have a, a red and black mandala. If you want to select all the black and separate that, for example, if you want to turn that into a cut file, I'll do Control Z here. And uh, so what I, what I can do here is I can select all the white and uh, delete it. So now we have a mandala that's just a frame, just an outline. I'll move it off here so you can get a better look. There, it's, it has no white. It's just a black, uh, black shape. And uh, you can select that all and group it so it will move as one piece because some of these parts here are a little bit disconnected. Uh, and then you can export this as an EPS or an SVG if you want to use it for a cut file. Just again, make sure you uh, copy anything you want to export and then uh, paste it into a new a blank document and export it from there because this uh, template has this watermark and stuff like that. So before I finish, uh, I just want to do a quick overview, uh, just a quick kind of Cliff's Notes here. So when you build a mandala, you'll always use the Start New Mandala script and then use these scripts to build it from there while selecting different patterns for each ring. When you are done uh, building the mandala, you will always run the cleanup line script and that makes all the lines the same thickness. If you want to make a cut file or you want to color the mandala, you'll also use the flattened mandala script. This will only work after this has been run. So if you're making uh, mandalas for a coloring book and you just need black and white uh, illustrations, you'll just build the mandala like normally, start new mandala, uh, do the uh, various uh, steps here, and you'll run the cleanup lines, and then that you would be done. If you just want a black and white mandala, you don't need to use any of these other scripts. But if you want to color it, or do you want to cut the mandala out, or save it as a, an SVG or something like that, you will need to use the uh, flattened mandala script. So hopefully this is a pretty good overview of a lot of the features on here. Uh, just remember that you won't need to use the flattened mandala script all the time, uh, just for certain projects, but you will always need to use the cleanup line script uh, when you're done building your mandala. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Uh, my email address is in that readme. So if you have any specific questions about Illustrator, about the add-on, or about coloring books, uh, I'd love to help. Just send me a message and I'll get right back to you. But uh, other than that, guys, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.